So instead of fighting it, agree with it. Yield to it. And you will find that he will go with you even to the end of the age. At this time, we welcome Pastor Jason Samuel Isarraga. We want to come preach to us the word of life. Praise the Lord, Morning Star. It's always just such a treat to be in the house of the Lord. This is definitely the focus of my week. I am so excited to be in the house of the Lord and so thankful for everything that he has done. The scripture tells us that loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. It's better than life. Life is pretty amazing. Life is pretty awesome. But his loving kindness is superior. That word loving kindness is defined as demonstrated loyalty. If he has demonstrated his loyalty to you, whew, then you should thank him just a little bit. If he has been by your side, if he's been beside you or he's been behind you or if he's picked you up when you've been stuck in the mud we thank him for all that he's done lord you've been loyal to me even when i failed you even when i've fallen down you've been there you have demonstrated your demonstrated your loving kindness unto me and for that my lips shall praise thee in the midst of the congregation, I will lift and magnify you because you are good and your mercies endure forever. Can somebody say amen? Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me. Thank you for touching my family. Thank you for the calling that is in my life. My God, we serve a wonderful God. Can somebody simply say amen? Amen. I want to thank God for Bishop. Why don't we thank God for Bishop Lizaraga, Lady Elect Lizaraga, First Lady Anna Lizaraga. We thank God for an awesome, 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 awesome leadership team. Lord, Lord is guiding us through this leadership. I'm going to ask that you would open in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3 and 5 through verse 7. If you would hold your place there, we're going to also read John 3 and 30, St. John 3 and 30. Again, we're going to begin 1 Corinthians 3 and 5. We will end in John 3 and 30. If you have found your place, could you please say amen? I'm excited for what God's going to speak to us on this evening. His word is just amazing. His word is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So that neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. John 3 and 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Let us pray. Father, we celebrate this day you've created through praise and worship. As the King of kings and Lord of lords, you are to be magnified and lifted up on high. As the praise has gone up, let the blessings of your word fall upon us even right now. There is stored up provision for this day. Let that manna fall and we will receive it and be nourished in the precious and the holy name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. The title that God has given me on this afternoon is the increase is determined by the decrease. 
the increase is determined by the decrease. One of our hardest jobs in serving the Lord is to keep our hands off of God's increase. So one of the hardest things to do. We have a job to do, we plant, we water, but in both of these instances, the glory and increase of the Lord is not to be touched. As I was meditating on this word, the Lord gave me a vision in my mind and brought an instant in the scriptures up, and I'm going to share that with you. In this meditation, the Lord brought me to Israel and the wilderness. I saw a particular traveler who was ready to pass on, ready to die, old from the way. His shoes and clothes were new, not wore out. He was dying in unbelief, yet his garments were ready to move on. It was sad. I don't know if it's going to hit you the way that it did me, but the Lord showed me that there were those who passed on in the wilderness. Their skin was old and wrinkled. They had seen many years, and you could see it upon their body and upon their face, yet their garments were new. Their garments had not been worn out. And when I saw this, the Lord took me to Deuteronomy 29 and 5. The scripture says, And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. The increase of the Lord kept the shoes and the garments of those who kept moving forward in the wilderness to the point that they never wore out. Divine provision, if you're taking notes, I want you to catch this. Divine provision will last the duration of God's intended journey. But will our faith keep up with what the Lord has furnished? God's provision is going to carry you to where you've been called. His provision. He's already made a way out. He's already given you what you need to get to where you've got to go and to the place that he has determined for your life. But is your faith going to hold on enough to keep up with God's divine provision? There are people that are going to pass on. There's people that are going to quit serving the Lord, yet the same thing's going to be on their life, that they're going to have their garments already, their gifts already, their ability is still there, their talents, their, their strength to do what God has called them to do is still there, yet they're going to die in the wilderness. They're going to die in the way because their faith could not keep up with, with what God had placed over their life. This is a sad picture of many in the church, and we've got to make sure that God, I want my faith to be where you're provision is if you said I'm gonna get through the wilderness I'm gonna keep trying even if I fall I'm gonna get back up God I've got to be where your presence is I can't wait back where the enemy is tempting me behind me but I've got to move forward because you've made a way out for me you've given me exactly what I need Such a sad thing to see that he paid such a great price and we can be so lax about what our Savior has sacrificed. Whatever God calls you to go through, he will give you unlimited resources. They will not wear out. They will not get old. 
but it is your job to renew your mind in conjunction with the resources it is your job to renew your mind in conjunction with the resources he has given you the shoes the gospel shoes of peace he has given you the garment of praise he has given what you need to make it through every dark season in your life but your faith has to step up and say through every test and trial through every temptation and problem that comes my way I'm going to move forward God I'm not tired my feet are not spiritually sore I'm going to keep moving forward in the promises that you have placed over my life I'm determined I'm going to make it all the way seems like the closer we get to his return the harder it is throughout the week to hold on to your faith and your praise Whew. i'm a pastor i'm a pk i've been raised in church i've been raised around church people but man every week that goes on it feels like throughout the week i can't wait to get back to the house of god because i know the enemy's trying to discourage the enemy's trying to depress the enemy is trying to kill steal and destroy but i can't thank God enough for the church of the living God where we can come with the freedom here we can fight back demonic forces together we can lift up the name of Jesus together we can sing in unity we can thank God for what he's done even though the enemy is out there trying to cause us to quit and to give up I thank God for you I thank God for you I thank God for my choir for my praise team for my bishop from the people of God I thank God for you because you are encouraging even me and I'm determined to make up my mind to go all the way I'm going to keep up with these shoes that God has given me. I'm going to keep up with this suit that God has given me. I'm going to keep up with the garment that God has placed in my life. I can't quit. I can't die in the wilderness. But I got to cross over into my promised land. I've got to get to heaven. Deuteronomy 2 and 7 tells us, for the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. Thou hast lacked nothing. Nehemiah 9 and 21 says it like this, yea, 40 years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old and their feet swelled not. My God, according to the scriptures, the wilderness saints lacked absolutely nothing. You need to get that into your spirit because everything that you need to get to the other side, God has provided for you. You need to tell the devil, I don't lack for anything. I've got everything that I need because I've got Jesus. I've got it all. Whew. This encouraged my spirit. But if you look at that, then you're like, hold up, hold up. I know a little scripture. There seems to be a little bit of a contradiction there. The traveler's reality was, of course, they saw the enemy chasing them from behind. At times they were cold. At times they were hungry. At times they were thirsty. At, at times they were up against the hostiles, etc., etc., etc. How is it that they lacked nothing? when they were presented with these problems. It almost seems to contradict the conditions of the wilderness. But the truth was, the challenge never got in the way of the provision. He challenged them by 
thirsty, a little thirsty, allowing the enemy to come up behind them, to be before them. They, 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 they had to experience a little time where they were uncomfortable. But the problem of the promise was, even though they could have been hungry or thirsty for just a little bit, there was always provision because they lacked nothing. <laughs> Woo! If you even got a little Holy Ghost, uh, that's going to cause your Holy Ghost to flutter just a little bit, to get excited. In other words, he tested them, but he always gave them to drink. They got a little hungry, but he sent quail and manna. They lacked for nothing. So what that tells you and me, there are times when we go through a little season of hunger, a little season of maybe sickness, a, a little season of mental disturbance, a, a little season of something here or there. But I'm here to tell somebody by the word of the Lord, you lack nothing. He's got water prepared for you. He's got food prepared for you. He's got a word stored up for you that you lack nothing. All you've got to do is call on Jesus. He will answer your prayer call on Jesus he will answer your prayer you lack for nothing you may have sorrow in your heart but he has joy that is prepared for you you may be discouraged you may be depressed you may be down and out but he's got what you need prepared for you because you lack nothing my God you may be sick but he's a healer you may be bound, but he's a deliverer. You lack for nothing when you are in the church. When you've got God, you've got it all. Why don't you thank him right where you're at? Thank you, Jesus. I lack for nothing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God. The scripture says, I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You ain't gonna go that hungry. You ain't gonna go that thirsty. You're gonna be all right. Because when you put your trust in him, as Bishop said, when you give him your all, and you give him the tent that represents everything, Lord, I give you my life, you're gonna provide for me. You're gonna take care of my babies. You're gonna take care of my children. I'm gonna stop worrying. I'm gonna start working. Why, why, why? Because my God has made provision. My shoes aren't going to wear out. My garment's not going to get old. It's just my job to keep pushing against every season, against every test and storm that comes my way. The enemy has been speaking into our minds, been telling us and focusing on the negative, but the devil is a liar. My God is so good. My God has taken care of me. He got, my God has blessed my mind. He's healed my body. He's picked me up. He's turned me around. He's placed my feet on solid ground. All because he is a good God. All because he is a good God. As a born again believer, you have faith in your God. You've repented of your sins. You've been baptized in Jesus' name. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And because of that, you have covenant with your God. You lack for nothing. It's just your job to complete the journey and to accomplish all that God has expected of you. And he's even made provision for that. <sighs> Write this down in your mind. There will be times of need, but not of lack. Woo! That'll preach all by itself. There will be times of need, but never of lack. If you could get that into your spirit, God will change the way you process every storm and trial that is coming your way. You will be in times of need, but never in lack. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. 
when you trust God, you believe that he will provide a ram in the thicket if needed, that he will split an ocean or a river just for you if needed. When you believe in your God, you know that he will rain manna from on high. He will quench your thirst from a dusty old rock. He will command a pillar of cold or heat ah, to combat the extreme weather that is round about you. When you believe and you trust in your God, he will Will show up because you have lack of nothing can somebody say amen? amen Samson's provision was unhindered and it was unlimited Samson's power to be a deliverer and a judge was unlimited foxes a troop of men the gates of a city were no match for the divine strength that God had given him. And not only that, he had given him a wisdom to judge and to rule the people. When we walk in covenant relationship with God, our purpose is unhindered like Samson's. There are no restrictions. But when human hands touch and modify what is to be left alone as in Samson's hair the increase or the continual flow from on high is capped I want you to think about that what God asked Samson to do as a deliverer and as a judge what stood in front of him? There was no match. There was no restrictions on his strength, on his wisdom. It was the increase of God that was upon his life. That increase would flow as long as covenant would flow. It would flow like his hair that was not to be touched. But in the lap of Delilah, seduced, he gave himself over to the enemy. That increase, that growth was capped all because his mind wasn't where it was supposed to be. But I want you to understand when God calls you to do something, the provision the gift, the talent, the ability that God gives you to get to where he's called you is unhindered. No devil can stand before you. No seductive spirit can get in the way. When you're walking with God, there's a power that you have through the Holy Ghost. People could have drugs round about you, but when you've got the Holy Ghost, it can't tempt you. You could be in the worst place possible that you find yourself, but when you trust in God and when you believe that you have purpose and destiny on your side, it can't determine, it can't deter you because God will make a way out of every situation. God has given you unlimited power. He's given you supernatural shoes. He's given you garment that can't get wore out. He's given you everything that you need. And I want you to understand there's there's nothing that can stand before you when you serve God the right way. Samson was unhindered until those unlawful hands began to cut his hair. Samson's power was temporary, temporarily shut down because of the modification of his covenant. When you play around with immorality, when you play around with bad spirits, it has the ability to reach out and to sever the connection that feeds your power. You may be wondering, why am I struggling today with having such a bad attitude in the house of God? Well, what have you been playing around with? Who have you been listening? Why is it that you can't praise God like you're supposed to? Why is it that you're not the leader of your house like you're supposed to? Why can't you praise Him with freedom? 
freedom. Why? Because the enemy has come into your house and begin to cut the unlimited power that's been in your life. You want the power back. You better tell the devil, get back. I'm not listening to you anymore. I've got to serve God. I've got to love you. I've got to love the people of God. And eventually your hair is going to start to grow again. And God will use you if you just humble yourself before him. It'll mess with you. It'll neuter and emasculate your power. It'll take away the ability for you to perform before the Lord the way you should. It'll mess with your conscience. <laughs> don't get cute with God. Young people, don't get cute with God. Learn how to have a, a reverence for the house of God and for the things of God. Don't sit there and laugh and think that this is some show. But understand that there are angels in this place. Understand that there are demonic forces that are looking at how you interact in the house of God. And when you have a bad attitude, I'm sorry but you're gonna get caught up in something that was never intended for your life. Because the devil knows that you've got power. You've tapped into the supernatural. He hates the Holy Ghost that you have. He hates the blood that cleanses you, the water that washes you, the spirit that empowers you, the table that nourishes you. My God, he hates the prayers that Jesus prayed for you. He hates the Holy of Holies that allows you to appear before God face to face. He hates the potential that you have in your life. You see, it's not always immediate, but if you play around long enough, it's going to catch up with you. The Holy Ghost is serving us notice, causing us to understand that the fear of the Lord has got to be in our lives. You're saying it because you're a preacher. You're saying it because it's your occupation. Let me tell you something. Before I ever preached, before I had a position, before I was ever full time, there was a, the fear of the Lord in my life. I've always honored men of God. I've always honored bishop and first lady. I have always had that respect. Why? Because there's something in me that believes that God has called me to make it to the other side. Whether I was a preacher, a pastor or not, I still would be serving him the way that I do today because I want to make heaven my home. I've got to get there. I want to be an example to my family. I want to do the best that I can because he's done so much for me. First Corinthians 3 and 4 tells us, for a while, one saith, I am of Paul and another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? In the book of 1 Corinthians, the church was through carnality dividing the unity of the church by ascribing personal allegiances to either the apostle Peter, Paul, or Apollos. If there's a lack of power in your life, check your hands where they are occupied in. Are you dividing or are you bringing together? Can I say to the young people, are you talking trash? Are you speaking peace? There was a division. Well, I, I, I'm of Paul. I'm, I'm of Apollos. I'm of Cephas. I, I follow him because, you, you know, uh, that brother's skin is just not right. Or uh, I don't like the way he talks. Or, you know, he's just not smart enough. Or he's not gifted enough. Or, you know, he's just this or that. And they begin to divide themselves. And they found preferences. And they begin to divide the church of Christ. Division always breaks the power. Division will break the power and the unity of the saints. That's why the devil doesn't want you here praising, worshiping, magnifying. That's why on your worst day, the devil shows up and is in your ear about somebody or something here. Why? Because he wants to pull you away. He wants to pull another one out of this place. Why? Because there's power when we come together. 
The scripture says, where two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord, <laughs> he shows up. That's why we can hold our brothers and sisters' hands, because we've been on the same battlefront and say, listen, brother, sister, let's magnify him together. I love you. Maybe we've had some kind of issues, but today we're going to put those things aside. We're going to move forward. Husband and wife, we've got to do this thing together because we've got to make it to the other side. We will not be divided. We will not be divorced. We will not be alienated. We will not be separate. Why? Because God has called us together to do the will of God. They were trying to divide the unity of the brotherhood. But verse 5 says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But they're simply ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. He said, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's the truth right there. God gives the increase. I think God is not dependent on me or Bishop. We're just co-laborers in the field. We're just giving you the good news. We're just preaching the gospel. We can add one cubit to your stature. But God, when you honor his word, he's going to give the increase. God is going to bless your family. God is going to heal your body. He's going to strengthen your finances. He's going to project your future when you honor him and you don't walk in division. Young people get this. Learn at a young age. Don't divide the unity. The more you divide, the more that you're going to struggle with power issues in your life to fight against demonic forces. It'll lead to addictions. It'll lead to some major problems if you're not careful fight against that ugly spirit learn to love your brothers learn to love your sisters learn to forgive them that uh, come against you even in the house of god you see this was telling us that paul preached he planted apollos watered he baptized in the name of jesus but know this morning star it is god who gives the increase We've all got a job, a position, a place. But it's God that gives the increase. Whether a gift, a minister, whatever it is that God gives us, we are not to touch or divide or even try to modify the glory of God. In other words, get your hands off of God's glory. Get your hands off of what God has put together. It's not man that put it together. So don't use your man's hands to, it, to cause it to divide. It's God that put it together. And because of that, God's power is going to flow through it. That's why the scripture says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. We didn't self-appoint. But it was God that called us. And, 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 and with great trouble, we, re, we responded to the call and said, yes, Lord, I'll do what you asked me to do. But Lord, just let me walk in your power. Let me walk in your anointing. Let me walk in your authority. Be careful when you mess with God's glory. Be careful when you touch God's increase. Because, as we spoke earlier, it's unlimited. You know, we probably could show up every day, and because we've been called to preach, we can preach you a new message every single day. You want to know why? Because when God has called you to preach the gospel, he has provided the words for you for every occasion, for every situation. I don't know how he does it, but I, I get on my knees and I say, God, I don't know why you use me, but give me a word for the people. And every time I ask for a word, he, 
<laughs> he provides and I lack for nothing. Why? Because he's a God of provision. He just said, put your shoes on, put your garment on, keep on walking, keep on fighting, keep on moving, keep on praying, keep on praising, keep on worshiping. And as we do that, God makes provision every single time. Lack for nothing. Ooh, he gives you what you need. When you've been struggling in your life, if you just trust him and you don't do like Esau did and so sell your birthright for a morsel of food, then God's going to step in and allow you to walk as a champion. Bless your family. Bless your mind. Bless your heart. All because you're not messing. You're not touching. Dividing. The increase. John 3 and 30 in closing tells us, he must increase, but I must decrease. We must decrease because we can get in the way of the inexhaustible resources of God. When we decrease, when we pray, when we fast, when we read, when we die to self, we make way for the increase. Whew. It's not in your talent, your ability, your pedigree, your name, your mental status. It's can I decrease? Can I get out of the way? And as you get out of the way, he steps in. And he gives you the power that you... Can I tell you, parents, that he will give you the wisdom to raise up your house. You don't need to be a preacher or a pastor or educated in the word. But if you can just get out of the way. Mm. Man, there's times when I'm speaking over my own house. And there's a word that is needed in my house. Ha. And it's... The Holy Ghost just breathes it through me and I speak a word. I don't even know where it came from. And it's fighting against demonic principalities that are attacking my house. The leadership, the authority in my home. All because I'm learning how to get out of the way. I'm learning how to decrease. And when I decrease, he increases. When we plant, when we water, get our hands off of it, the Lord grows it up. The Lord gives the increase. We don't have to deal with insecur insecurities, inferiority complexes. All we have to do is say, I'm going to get out of the way. A bad attitude will stop you. Cynicism will kill it. Because that's you. Well, you know, <laughs> that's funny. That's a joke. That's, you don't need to do all that. You don't need to pray like that. You don't need to have that allegiance. You don't need to give. You don't need to do this. You, go ahead. Knock yourself out. Laugh. Joke about it. But in time, you may be that saint laying in the dirt ready to go put brand new shoes and a brand new garment why because God gave you the increase he made provision for every part of your walk but could you get out of the way and say I'm gonna die to my preconceived ideas I'm going to die to my preferences. I like this person. I like that person. I like that preacher and that minister. But this one I don't like. You got to get your hands off the anointing, off the increase. We're making it more complex than what it needs to be. Because we're listening to the devil. It's a matter of humility. Humility. 
Psalms 55 and 19 says, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes. Therefore they fear not God. To die to self, to give way to the increase, you've got to change. But there are some people that will not change. They have no changes. Same nasty attitude. Same messed up perspective. You don't see any growth in their life. Why? They're touching the increase. And there's no change in their life. I feel the power of God. I'm going to ask that you would stand. I'm going to ask that you would lift your hands in a declaration of us getting our hands off the glory of God. This is a lifting of the hands of surrender. This is a lifting of hands of humility. Lord, I don't want to touch the increase. God, forgive me for the way I'm treating my spouse. Forgive me for the way that I'm looking at my ministry. Forgive me, Father, for the way that I'm treating the increase. Forgive me, Father. I lift my hands in complete surrender to you. I love you, Jesus, and I magnify you. I will lift my hands, God. I will make a declaration that you are my everything. I'm sorry, Father, for what I've allowed things to become. But I hand it over to you. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. But I'm going to allow the increase to flow once again in my life. Lord, let the increase fall like the man in the quail, Jesus. Let it fall to everyone that is making a declaration right now before you who is standing against pride and arrogance and say, Jesus, come back into my family. Come back into my house. Come, come back into my person. Jesus, give me what I need, Lord God. And if you're lifting your hands, why don't you make your way to the altar? Jesus, I'm going to decrease while you increase. The increase is determined by the decrease. My elevation is determined by how low I can go in prayer to humble myself before you, Jesus. I don't want to be a divider of my house because of my pride. But I want to be a unifier, subjected to your will, humble before you. Jesus, have your way. Lord, I have lack of nothing. For every temptation, you'll make a way out. Bless us, Father. Help us, Jesus, to do your will. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, have your way. That's it. Lift him up. Lift him up. He loves you. He loves you. He's touching somebody's mind right now if you just allow him. He's going to strengthen you in your situation. Oh, Lord, I lift you up, Jesus. Your loving kindness is better than life. Therefore, my lips shall praise thee.
Oh 
to be glorified, you to be lifted. 